Hi, my friends. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be at a bing, at a boom. Who, who can whistle? Does anybody know how to whistle? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. All right, you ready? Are you ready? Um, so some of you, half of you, or less than half of you, met me yesterday. I'm Ron Moreland. I'm the instructional technology dude. They call me tech boy, literally. It's not disrespectful. That's what the superintendent calls me, tech boy. So um, you're welcome to call me tech boy. But my name is Ron, and my role for the district is kind of to try to bridge the gap between the technology, technology department and educational services. So like um, the curriculum office and that stuff. So my house, I'm um, used to be a teacher, used to be an elementary principal, middle school principal, t turn tech. So that's kind of my pathway to where I'm at right now. So I really identify with you all, but I'm also kind of self-made tech geek. And so that just fit as a position. And so my role is to help you all find new and inventive ways to integrate technology to engage kids, right? So um, this isn't really the order of my presentation, but it actually came in super handy for me, so um, I'm gonna capture this moment. What's probably the first thing you'll have to do every day when you get to your classroom? I heard, <laughs> what? <laughs> Take attendance, or elementary lunch count, attendance, the whole thing. So, I didn't do anything special here. I should have, I should have put something cool on here, but what I've done here is this on the remote, and your remote, depending on what model, and we'll talk about the different models and the differences, but on your remote, there's this thing called the freeze button. It comes in so handy, so you pop up like a welcome screen for your kids, you know, hey, get to sit down and do your journal on, you know, why cats are gonna take over the world, whatever. And, and then you hit freeze, and then guess what? I can go do my attendance and all those processes that I have to do on my computer, right? And, um, they don't know any different. They, they're still seeing the reminder up front or whatever their you know, task is as the bell ringer or whatever. So now that I want to go back to a live image of what I actually have on my screen, I'm going to hit the freeze button again. It's just a toggle on and off. And how many of you have cell phones right now that have data plans that you can get to the web or the interweb? OK, so literally almost all of us. So I, here's another teachable moment. Um, you're walking into this room with computer technology that is more powerful than probably, well, I know my generation had going to school in, in any of the computer labs. So I know that's risky, the whole bring your own device thing. And of course, your school may have particular policies, but work with your principals because I know there's, oh, I can't think of his name, a guy at West High is leveraging um, the student devices in his classroom to basically create a, um, a whole nother layer of education, and it's awesome. But if you have your um, cell phone with me, with you, go ahead and go to www.todaysmeet.com slash newbie. See what I did there? Because you're a newbie, get it? Okay. So if you've never, had, how many of you used or are familiar with Today's Meet? It's like this. In the educational language lingo, it's called creating a back channel. And basically, you can really have some powerful conversations going on, a little bit like Twitter. You know how you go to a conference and people are tweeting about what they're hearing. And, and it kind of adds that extra layer of education. Well, um, today we're going to kind of use it as just honestly, this, how many of you are like super sarcastic? OK, you, you and I will get along. So, the weirder, I do this presentation with you and I student teachers pretty regularly, and it's funny some of the stuff they come up with. So you're welcome to just post stupidness, but if you have a legit question or, hey, have you ever thought about doing this or that kind of thing, I will try my best to remember to check that site, but I want you to have that experience of what a back channel might be like in your classroom. Um, I've seen some really awesome, um, oh, novel discussions where the class is going through a, a, um, a high school class is going through a novel and um, one group, uh, one person has to speak in a certain character's, um, they have to role play basically 
electronically. And so anything they say on today's meet has to be in that role and in, in trying to make it sound real and that kind of thing. So that might be a, a cool activity for you. Um, elementary folks don't, uh, that sounds a little more like middle and high school activities, but um, certainly with um, a handful of computers in your, um, you could have the note taker of the day sit at todaysmeet.com and archive the conversation and do the best they can. You know, of course it will be uh, minimal, but then we can review and just those skills that we can do. So, all right. And I apologize, this board is broken today, as you already know. So I have no sound and no pins. And we're going to talk about why. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to be running around getting back to my computer, and it's going to be frustrating and annoying. OK, so just for kicks and giggles, let's go to today's meet. Oh. Are we going to talk about layering? Somebody's had some experience with Promethean already. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. All right, so we'll check that periodically if I remember. All right, so here again, I have to do this from my computer. I apologize. I would be a little more animated normally. All right. So as many of you know, um, our last superintendent just retired, and we have a new superintendent, but about six or seven years ago, this guy, Dr. Gary Norris, came to our district. And this guy was like all about change and shaking the tree. And so um, <laughs> you'll notice the background is kind of a dark and scary night, right? And so he started talking, <laughs> he started talking about um, some pretty scary things like Promethean boards and Promethean planets. <laughs> and so the winds of change started coming, right? And some teachers walked into their room one day with one of these bolted to the front of their room, and this is what we got. What did you do to my chalkboard? Okay. So I'm trying to also model for you digital storytelling. And who do we want to be doing most of our digital storytelling? Students. Okay. Absolutely. You model it. Um, but if kids can reflect their learning and understanding of a concept through some sort of digital storytelling, that's powerful, okay? So, so these, these things got bolted literally to every classroom front teaching surface, and, and, and so there was a lot of anxiety. However, you know, so here you have teacher A, who's been around. They were the ones that did a little bit of screaming, right? And then teacher B, you, you newbies come along, and you don't know any different, and you kind of walk in and um, kind of get it. You know, that's a little bit of a stereotype, but generally, you know, we're starting to hire these digital natives where, um, you know, some of our veteran teachers didn't grow up in that, okay? And that's perfectly fine. That's just where we are at. And so what we found is um, teacher A finally gave up a little bit of their pride and said, okay, Teacher B, I totally, I totally see what you're doing, and I really think it's cool, and I see how it's engaging kids. So you have this little bit of reach across the hall, hey, Teacher B, can you help me? Okay. And so Teacher B, you know, is like, well, of course I'll help you, you know, because you're trying to, you know, make a presence in the building, and you're a big deal now. And, and so what we find is, Teacher A, a veteran teacher, is actually learning from our teacher B's. And they start what? Growing. Oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> However, let's not forget that teacher A has years of awesome experience with kids that some of our newbies do not have. So they start learning these new skills and leveraging that in even more powerful ways. So guess what happens? Teacher B goes, oh, my gosh. I see that your kids aren't climbing out the windows. <laughs> okay, can you help me please? And then so we have this give and take, give and take. Both sides start growing. And I want you to think out of the terms of technology, or um, Promethean right now, 
because we're going to have a real honest conversation about Promethean boards here in a second. But as this growing and, and building off of each other happens, what happens to the scary landscape? A little less scary, right? Okay. So, digital storytelling. I'm also going to model some, some tools for you because let's, let's be honest, I, I have an hour with you. You're, this isn't a training, this is an orientation. This is a here's what you can do and go figure it out is kind of what this becomes and I apologize for that. But one tool that I want to show you is that you can, A, you can assign labels to objects. See how if I hover teacher A, if I hover teacher B, and these labels, these boxes I can assign actions to. And the action I assigned was if clicked, it's in the settings, if clicked, then make this thing grow by X percent. You know, so there's these little settings that you can do. So there's, um, just know that you can do that. I'm also gonna model the reset. You know, if you have a page that you wanna use several periods in a row, um, you can have it mucked up and the kids are moving stuff, and then when you're done, you just hit this re page reset. It's like a roundy, roundy circle arrow thing. And it goes back to the last saved version of that page, okay? So, and page turn are arrows. All right, <laughs> mascot of the day. Have any of you, before we do that, have any of you, I'm gonna stress somebody out though while I do this. I think we have a winner. <laughs> okay. How many of you are familiar with, I'm just gonna leave that up there, just, just so somebody can stress out about, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be up there. I'll walk in front so it's not quite so. All right, so every classroom, by the way, every classroom, all right, listen now, I shouldn't have done that. Every classroom should be outfitted with one of these document cameras, okay? So just a FYI, you should have a, a document camera somewhere in your room. And if you don't, then that's a help desk ticket. Yeah, there really should be. And then every classroom should be out with it, and we're going to mess with the student response systems here in a little bit, with either, if you're in an elementary, the little half eggshell-y looking ones, they're called active votes or the middle and high school people have active expressions which give us a little bit more functionality in what can be text back to, this, to the computer, okay? So are any of you familiar, have you been to enough conferences, educational technology conference, are you familiar with the SAMR model, S-A-M-R? Yeah, I know somebody, and like she's like, could be me right now and probably do a better job. Um, well, I, Mr. Wall, can you, Talk us through um, SAMR. What's S? Substitution. Substitution. A. A augmentation. augmentation. Um, modification. And R is redefinition. Okay, so there's this like, you know, Bloom's taxonomy, but this is kind of like ed tech people decided, let's create a model. And so <laughs> we have SAMR, and there's a million different ones, but it kind of makes sense. Substitution is technology that's, we already have something in place, tech, tech is just kind of literally a direct substitution. Augmentation is, yeah, it might give us some slight improvements. Modification, okay, start modifying the tasks in a totally different way than we could before. And then of course, redefinition is like totally things we would never even think to do until the technology showed up. And that's a super oversimplified. But, so let's just have the real honest conversation right now. Promethean boards, where does that fall in that model? Substitution, augmentation, modification, redefinition. It potentially depends on how you use it, but at its best, what is it? At its best, I'd put it at augmentation. And honestly, the way I've seen it used um, pretty regularly, I did an audit of about 650 classrooms at the end of last year. Just walked in, kind of took note of what was happening in the classroom, and it really was a substitute for a chalkboard. There was really no, what was happening with it was really could have happened another way with a chalkboard or a dry erase board. Now, where we can get some augmentations, we do some more 
digital storytelling and bringing in websites or videos and those things, um, it's still pretty low, low level. So let's just be real honest. If you're, if you're cooking with oil with a Promethean board, don't equate that with really awesome, solid technology integration in your classroom. I know that sounds weird coming from the tech guy when this is the tool we have in our classrooms, but I don't want you to limit yourself. That's not the ceiling. I am awesome at Promethean. That's not the ceiling. There is just like so much more up there, okay? All right, mascot for the day. I, I, it's a bummer that it's a, is anybody close to the light? Nah, that's not good. It's gotta be a dark picture, but I would say, You might as well just smile really pretty right now. There we go. One, two, three. There she is. You played very nice. Oops, I must have taken two. Now, that camera like a webcam? Do you want to Skype? Great question. Yes. Um, however, there are some versions of Skype that just don't play nice with these, and I don't know why. So we've. Your texts know what version of Skype play nice. And so if that's something like you want to Skype in an author, absolutely, absolutely. So you have a built-in um, webcam for sure, right? I personally would do what I just did with every student at the beginning of the year, and I'll show you where you can save their little avatar, and they'll never know when that bell ringer, when attendance is being taken, it's going to be a picture of them with a bubble coming out of their head with some text. So. I'm going to delete that guy. Now, we don't want all the background information, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna model another tool for you. Um, Active Inspire, which is the software that you'll all have installed on your computer, um, has a camera tool, and there is one option which is called Freehand Snapshot. Of course, that thing always comes up in the wrong spot, but we're gonna just, it's much easier at the board when you have a pen to do this. But we're gonna cut, what's your name? Tracy. Tracy, thanks for being a good sport. And I have some options to either send it to the current page, which I'm gonna do, um, put it on a new page, which I'm not gonna do, but here's the powerful thing. Some people use this tool not for Promethean purposes, but for their, because I can save this picture to the clipboard. Does, it, does everybody know what the clipboard is? When you do control C, it copies the last thing you re it, it remembers. And then I can control V for Velcro into Microsoft Word for my newsletter or into any other document. So I have often launched Promethean just to use the camera tool and then to use that picture somewhere else. So it's a pretty handy tool. So I'm gonna actually send it to the current page. You should hear a, oh, there's usually a little snapshot. Sound? Well, I thought we had a little bit. Oh, did I get unplugged? Oh, that's interesting. It's like blinking. That's probably not a good sign. Nobody breathe. <laughs> All right, so pretend like that's a camera snapshot sound, okay? And then I also don't want you to underestimate the power of this. There's this flip chart trash can I'm gonna bring up. Can you all see that up there? Um, very powerful tool of getting that kinesthetic. Um, I've seen teachers really, especially at the primary grades, but don't, don't, think that your high school kids don't like it too. Um, oh, these don't work. But like, you know, hey, drag all the pronouns to the garbage, you know, and then physically drag something to the trash. There's, there's value in that, um, that muscle memory stuff. I have to do it from my computer, unfortunately. But in this case, I'm gonna kill our original. And here we have our friend. Okay, in fact, she needs to be rotated a little bit. Whoa, whoa. Okay. So when you click on, I'm also modeling, when you click on an object and you have it, quote, highlighted, you're going to have some handles. So first of all, you have handles that can either stretch it and distort it 
or the one with a little diagonal maintains proportions. And that's usually, usually in the bottom right corner, but not always, all right? But then these little handles up the top, there's rotate, there's kind of the right click options that you get. And this one also comes in handy at times, the translucency tool. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> All right, and there's other stuff that you can play with. But um, I'm gonna also model the shape tool, which is in your main toolbox to the right, usually. And there is, of course, a speech bubble. Okay, and I could have picked different colors, but that's what we're gonna live with. And hello, world. Now, another thing I'm gonna model for you, what if, what if I want that all to move together instead of each of those three things being separate? Because right now the text is separate, the bubble's separate. So what I can do is, how many of you have used other page layout software where you can group objects, okay? So it's kind of the same concept. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just drag somewhere outside on the world and then highlight things, at least be touching the things I want to group. And then one of the buttons at top is called group. So I click it and it kind of turns yellow. And now, oh, I also grabbed the title, which I thought was locked down, but it's not locked. So, okay. All right. Um, so I have a problem. I really want to reset this page for the next group. What do I do? The little circle roundy roundy reset page. Yes. How do you lock down something that you can't reset? Yeah, good question. Let's go. Let's go back for a second. So the question is, how do you lock something down? So what if this, I really want this to be kind of really part of the background. So how many of you like right click with a regular mouse? Like that's where all the magic and unicorns and rainbows are, right? And, and I am shocked at how many people don't know about right click. So right click with your mouse and all kinds of happiness happens, including an option to lock it, okay? I think this was one that's in their backgrounds. I'll sh I can show you where there's like kind of a bucket of clip art and backgrounds and different stuff. Yeah. yeah, and absolutely, because one of the options I have is anything you can see on your computer, what if I want to capture that um, little today's meet thing? I can get a picture of. So one of the tools up at the top in your main toolbox, you guys are rabbit trailing me. Um, I thought you wanted to get out of here early desktop tools and the nice thing about Promethean is if you hover long enough it'll tell you what it is so desktop tools and it looks like oh my gosh it went away but you'll notice there's a little disk floating and I have some options and one of my options that awesome camera tool and I'm actually just gonna do a, a area snapshot which is gonna be a square that I can resize and we're just going to do this and send it to the current page there it is and if I want to go back to that page, I have to select the little return to flip charts icon in, in that disk that floats around. And there's my today's meet. So hopefully your brain just made all kinds of connections. Like I'm not restricted to what's inside of Promethean anymore. In fact, I could have shown you a better way in that, oh, let's just um, L this. Pictures of Ellis, ah, it's a good one, view image. All right, so I could just literally drag and drop right from the internet. Promethean's pretty, pretty handy that way. So talk about a background opportunity, let's look at this. I'm going to actually show you another little trick. That picture came in so huge, because you know, pictures are different sizes. Um, I'm gonna go down to like 25% so I can actually get to the side of it and I am going to shrink him, okay? And now, somebody use your noggin, something else you saw today already. I kind of want him to not be, like I can still see Elvis, but I want him to just be in the background, kind of ghosty. Transparency. Transparency tool, so how do I get it? Right click on no, I love right click. So I need to select him, right? So I get all the little handles and gadgets and wizards. All right, so now I have him selected, and there the little sun, and this is another thing people don't realize. You have to click and hold, and it's a slider. So I'm clicking and holding, and then I can slide him. Okay. 
Elvis is alive in the forest. Okay? All right. That was a serious rabbit trail. All right. Um, if you are anywhere near one of the little active boats, the little half eggshells, go ahead and pick that up. I'm going to launch this question, make sure that I'm targeting the right device, which is active boats. And you tell me, you and I, women's basketball, plays Indiana State the last regular season game. True or false? And you can start seeing, as you vote, the little icon for that device turns yellow. Yes, yes, I could have targeted a different, I can only have one device being selected at a time. All right, I'm going to give you five, four, three, two, one, and stop, because I probably don't have all the devices working or something. I'm not going to allow a retry. And right away, I can tell, I can get classroom data immediately. Um, so if this was an objective where you were dipsticking to see somebody, the kids' understanding of the concept, what would you do? I l would you say? Yeah, I think I would. Half of my kids didn't get it. Now, if it was 80-20 for the betterment of the, the majority, I might move forward. But the cool thing is I have a who answered what list that I can go and remediate with those specific kids at, at another time. Yes? Uh, yeah, good question. It, it's a set of 32. So you have a big bag of them per classroom. Yeah. So theoretically, every kid should ha be able to vote unless you have a bigger classroom than 32, and then you have to beg and borrow and steal from somebody else. But what we've, we've often found is like our special needs teachers sometimes have, you know, at most 15 kids or something like that. Well, you, you borrow from their bag, and I'll, I'll show you, well, I don't know how much time, we're out of time almost for already. Dang it. Um, it was true, and it was um, shown by a green, yeah, I said that it was green is the correct answer. Yep. All right, I will have you know too that if you had a series of, you know, you've heard of the CFA thing that you're all going to be doing regularly with your teams, common formative assessments, um, you certainly can do a series of maybe 10 to 20 questions. And then you'll notice on this tab over here, the farthest right tab in this menu to the left is called the voting browser. And there is an export to Excel. When you're all done taking the quiz, you, you can export it to Excel, and it's got a really nice summary sheet. And the next one is an item analysis sheet. And then there's a student analysis sheet. So you can really break down to the nitty gritty. Okay. Um, I ain't going to lie. There's some glitches that we need to figure out. Whoa. Oh, I said a little hidden link to, to the actual answer on the website. OK. All right, next one. Um, if you had the eggshell, give it to somebody who did not get a turn. Who is this guy? Dude from new Batman movie or disturbed Waterloo community school tech trainer? All right, five, four, three, it remembers the last one you do. Um, but if I stop the vote or if everyone, if you're the last kid, it will just be done and then you don't get a chance. Once it's kind of stopped, you can't. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it. So the idea here was, oh, you all know that it's a disturbed, I don't know who he is, but he's crazy. Okay, that's enough. 
So that, the full video of that is on the website. If you want to go to the technology department, Promethean Resources, it's on there. Um, I don't know who that guy is, but it looks a lot like my bedroom. Just saying. <laughs> That video actually has a really nice interview. Um, one of, actually, in, uh, who's that? Carver. Carver, Carver, Carver. Yeah, a handful of you. So the principal, the new principal at Carver, Mike Landers, his mommy was one of the people that I interviewed. And she was a veteran teacher. She was about done. She's going to retire in a year or two. And she told me, she was one of them and said, I can't believe you bolted that right over my chalkboard. And just, you know, and I loved her because I used to be her principal, and, and she's an amazing teacher. But she just didn't believe in this tech thing. Well, she later then became one of my best proponents, and she, she actually did an interview with me, and she delayed her retirement because she wanted to figure this stuff out more. So, in fact, there's a cool, um, she has a cool activity that we recorded where she, um, they simulate the Smithsonian website. You can simulate a, a dinosaur dig. And they, she had this girl, just all the processes that a ar archaeologist would do. I, it, whatever. It was really cool. She's like, I just can't sleep at night. I'm thinking all the websites I could have the kids go on. And uh. Second grade teacher. She's awesome. Um, you guys, literally, we have two minutes. I'm trying to decide what to do. Um, every year, every, I think I'm at this point, I'm, I, you guys have been blitzed. I'm going to give you some resources to write down. I have lots of samples and things you can do, but um, here, I'll do it on this page. No, we have to talk about cables. I, we have to. I'm sorry. We got a late start. So the two, the two types of boards that you're going to see probably are the old original orange highlighted ones with my orange representation today. Um, used to high. And then um, new board is more gray highlights. And um, there are only, there's a couple differences. So the cables you're going to need to know, because honestly, what you really needed to know today, instead of all my weirdness, is the cables that you need to know to set the dang thing up to work. OK, so if you are walking into an original style board with the orange highlights, the video cable that transfers what you see on the computer to the projector is a VGA cable, very similar. Often they have the blue ends, but not always. Um, but it's got the little pins, and it really only fits in one place, OK? Um, to run the sound, if your sound actually works on your board, um, is a headphones jack into like kind of the, is it composite, um, red and white. Um, up into the back side of the board, there's a little box that it goes into. And the pins, if they're not working, I would check your USB cable. How many of you have ever plugged in an external mouse to your laptop? Well, same, this whole thing is literally just a giant mouse. That's all it is. And then the software kind of marries that mouse with the projector. There's really nothing all that special about this thing here. It's just a giant mouse pad. So if your mount or your pens aren't working, it's probably your USB cable could be reseated or is disconnected. Now the new one, the only difference is video, same cable. Sound, there doesn't need to be a sound cable with the new because sound and pens both travel over USB cable. Okay. There's a couple things. I'm not going to show you the connect. Yes, to get all of it, yeah. To get the video, sound, and pens to go. All right, so if you have a newer style board on the side, um, you saw them troubleshooting. This one's not even lit up at all, which means there's no power coming to the board at all. So um, if it's red, you're dead. That's what I always say. If it's red, you're dead. Your pens and your sound probably aren't going to work. All you have to do is tap this little button on the side. It turns green, and then things should come alive. So you know how little fingers like to jack with you. That's what's going to happen. Okay, sound can go wrong in several different ways. One of them, probably the most common, is somebody has come and muted their sound on their computer and forgot they did it, and then we get a help desk call and panicky, I'm trying to show a video, and it turns out it's muted. Okay? The other thing, on the old style board, there's this funky alien speaker, um, and there's actually a volume and power knob on the back of one of those as well. 
And then finally, as if that wasn't confusing enough, the little board that's usually bolted on the side of the wall or coming out of the side of the Promethean board has a volume knob on it. And this ha actually does, the newer ones have it built into the side of the board. Okay? So there's several places the sound can go wrong. We talked about the remote other than um, you click the power red button once to turn it on, but then you're going to have to click it twice and then confirm to power it down. The one thing that I have to tell you is do you, try not to use the no-show button on your remote. And I'll tell you why, because you all have like 500 kids running in, and I, you know, it's just Harry Carey, and I totally get it. If you hit that no-show and you're kind of leaving your room, you look, and, oh, yeah, it's off. Well, guess what? It, that bulb is still burning as bright as ever. It's just they've got a technology that just kind of sh doesn't show it. And so um, we go through bulbs very quickly that way. So try not to use the no-show. If you're going to be gone for more than, we usually say, 20, 25 minutes, go ahead and just power the board down, the projector down. I know you usually have to have a little bit of a warm-up time, too, but it's, it's generally better to leave it on. If, if you're just leaving for 10 minutes and you're going to be back using it, just I would leave it on. Okay. Um, pens are interesting beast. So, I don't. You've all used a regular mouse. So, um, moving a mouse does what? Just moves the cursor to where you want it to go. Okay, that's the same. If I if I hover close enough, I can't even model it. It's terrible. But if I hover close enough, but without touching the board, it just moves where I'm at. Okay. Um, left clicking does what? It's like you're selecting, you're interacting with something, or if you keep holding, you can drag stuff. That's like touching the board and dragging and keep touching and manipulating something on the page. Okay? Right click is where it gets really weird. Um, right click is getting close enough to the board but not touching it, and then hitting the button on the pen. Because if you've ever used a real mouse and tried to click both buttons at the same time, it freaks out. It like, it was like, what are you trying to tell me to do? So. Um, same thing with that. So if I'm actually touching the board and clicking the button, it freaks the computer out. Because honestly, I'm not really touching a board here. Remember, this is just a big mouse. I'm really actually messing with my computer. Um, oh, I can't model this either. But there will be times where you're going to walk up to your board and you're going to try to touch something and the cursor is like a foot away. And so you're like, oh man, that does weird things to your brain. Like seriously, you're like, wow, I, I didn't even drink. And um, so what you need to do is, there's actually several ways to calibrate. Well, one of them is if you hover the end of the pin over the flame in the upper left corner, it will launch a calibration screen where you, you touch the crosshairs and you very meticulously tell it the parameters of your board and your projection, okay? Um, if that, for some reason, doesn't work, you can actually go down to the lower right corner into the, uh, the little tray down here, and there should be a driver icon. It's supposed to look like a little Promethean board with Prometheus carrying the fire, right? If you right click on that, there is actually a calibration um, screen as well. And actually, I find that to be more reliable than the whole hover thing. I don't know, it's glitchy. Oh my goodness, resources. Okay, so you have to know this too. So. If you are plugged in, you're sure your cables are happy, and you still can't get your, what you see on the um, screen up here, um, it might be that you need to basically throw your image to another projector. According to Windows, you know, there's three different scenarios. And the first scenario is I see it on my computer, I don't see it on the projector. The second scenario is where I'm cloning both places, and that's where we want to go. And then the other scenario, I've actually seen that, and it's very disturbing as well, is where you see it on the projector but not on your computer. And so you can actually toggle between those three. It used to be there was this funky keystroke that you had to do, and it really, there was no confirmation until it actually, about three seconds later, changed. Well, now everyone should have Windows 7 now. I think we've officially gone away from XP. So it's now Windows, which is the little Windows icon. It looks like a flag. You hold that down and hit P for projector, and it actually pops up. A, I mean, it's got this visual, this is what I want to do. And um, of course, we want the duplicate, where what you see here is what I see there. And actually, there's a third one where you can extend your desktop, and that gets a little hinky as well. I do that with my monitors at work, but probably not with your Promethean. All right, resources. I think that's all, yeah. 
Yep, 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 yep. I'll go back to that one page. First of all, you're going to want to go to www.prometheanplanet.com. Prometheanplanet.com has a bunch of training vids and downloadable flip charts like these lessons that teachers submit. So why start from scratch when you can beg, borrow, and steal? Now, just the, the disclaimer is that some are better than others, but it might be a good starting place, and you can edit and tweak what, the, what you download there. So prometheanplanet.com. Um, if you go to www.waterk12.in/slash Promethean, our homegrown resources are there. Okay, so the Waterloo School's website slash Promethean, you'll find some of my weird videos there and how to's. Okay, um, of course, you all learn about the Staff Common. Um, where there's kind of like the dumping ground for everything, the district, there's a Promethean folder buried in there that has a bunch of stuff for you to look through there. If you, um, if you want places to play, here's where I would play. I would, this browser up here, this big, this toolbar sometimes gets closed. If I want to view it, again, what menu would you use? View, right? So view, browsers. And they call it a browser's plural because there's these tabs up top. One is a page browser. The next one is resource browser. Object browser, it shows everything on the page in what order. Somebody said, are we going to learn about layers? Well, not in an hour, but um, that's how you can adjust layers and get things in front of other things and that kind of thing. Here's where those settings are. Remember those actions that I said when I click this, it does this? You can do actions. And then the voting browser is where you um, manipulate the student response systems. Okay. The one I would say to play in is the resource browser. That's where all the clipart stuff, the backgrounds. Here's where probably, you know, that's where I got the paper background I'm using right now, patterns, photographs, okay. But again, you're not limited to that. I hardly ever use that now because I can just get something from the interweb, right? Um, my email, morelinr at waterlooschools.org. Um, I am not afraid if you say, hey, the fourth grade team really would love to have you come out and show, or if all you newbies to get, get together, I can come out and do, because uh, we, you know, you don't even, at this point, don't even really know how to set up your clickers. And I'll be quite honest with you, you're going to find a lot of veteran teachers that don't know how to do the clickers. So um, in the past, we have offered, um, I think there will probably be money, in the past, we've done this quick orientation so that maybe you can figure out how to set up. And then we usually do about a two or three hour training, bring you back in where we actually get your hands on it, where there's laptops and you get your hands on the equipment and learn how to do it. So be looking for that probably in late, well, late August, early September probably.